Hello there, sorry for the delay on the summary video, but this is the summary of this past Sunday's message as we're continuing on our Christian life journey, now stopping in the area of our sexuality, uh, which has to do with, with both our sexual expression as well as the way we judge other people and, and interact with other people in regard to their sexuality. And we start with knowing the parameters. We kind of need to know the, the ground rules that we're working inside of, uh, making sure we're not judging people for things that are not a problem, but making sure that at the same time we're not going into sinful areas in, in sexuality. So what are the parameters? Well, the parameters are uh, sexual sin is adultery, uh, having sex with someone who is not your spouse, uh, is is adultery that one is plainly clear in scripture and uh, typically accepted by culture even though there's small pockets of people who don't then there is fornication which is sex outside of marriage now that one is also plain in scripture but there are plenty of people even inside the church that that embrace that as an acceptable lifestyle a lot of people in our culture embrace that as an acceptable lifestyle but it is not acceptable according to the Bible. It is a sin to have sex outside of marriage, to commit fornication. Underneath that, a subcategory is that it is a, it is not technically a sin, but it is problematic to cohabitate. That is to live with someone who is uh, of the opposite gender, particularly a non-relative, particularly someone that you are in a romantic relationship with. Uh, that is, the, re the problem with that is uh, twofold, uh, but besides the fact that uh, what romantic couple are actually living together, especially sleeping in the same bed, and are not having sex with one another, which would be sin, uh, but there's nothing in the Bible that clearly says you can't live with someone that is a different gender than you, that you're romantically interested in, but the way the Bible instructs us to deal with temptation, we're called to run from it, to flee from temptation. And we're also called to live in such a way that people cannot accuse us of living in a sinful way. And cohabitating certainly is not doing that. You're not running from temptation. You're putting it right in front of you. And you are not avoiding being able to be accused of sin because... If people were to think about it, they were to think that that uh, you are committing uh, fornication uh, in that in that regard. So that there's reasons why we want to avoid cohabitation. Uh, then there's homosexuality, which uh, just like fornication is pretty pretty strongly accepted in culture, uh, and even within the church, there's acceptance of it. But the Bible labels that sin. It's outside of the parameters of Scripture. Now that one has a special uh, issue in that it be has become a political culture war issue. So we'll touch on that in a moment. Another boundary is lust. We are, that, though, though there's not a lot of scripture about that, there are a couple that are clear, especially in Matthew 5 that says that if you lust after a woman, you've committed adultery in your heart. Uh, so that's Jesus that said that. So it's clear that we aren't to lust uh, therefore, that would also include pornography. So these are things that are sinful. These are areas we don't want to go into. Uh, and yet the Bible, you think about Proverbs 5 and the book of Songs of Solomon, pretty explicit that uh, we are called to, you also consider 1 Corinthians 7, that, that not only is sexuality meant to be enjoyed in, within a marriage, uh, but it is also a mandate to do. So God wants us to enjoy that. There is intention to be satisfied sexually. God made us as sexual beings, uh, and yet there's these parameters. So it's one of those things where you can experience it, should experience it, and find satisfaction. It's good to have that desire, and yet you aren't supposed to have it in certain contexts. So how do I uh, manage that? So that's something we'll get to in future messages on how to find deliverance in uh, sexuality as far as sexual sin. So now, what about the attitude? Well, in John chapter 8, uh, Jesus uh, has a, an encounter with the woman caught in adultery. 
uh, the Pharisees captured this woman and brought in the act and brought her to Jesus and they uh, they brought a conflict to Jesus and verse 5 of chapter 8 the first thing was they demanded consequences they said hey this woman was caught in adultery the law says that someone should be stoned for doing this what do you say and that even though uh, that was kind of secondary to their motive they were trying to primarily set a trap for him nonetheless they their words were this is what she deserves she should have consequences because she committed sin and jesus pushed against that uh, he pushed against that idea of pushing for consequences for someone's sexual and this is specifically sexual sin adultery in this case but i think it would be applicable to other sexual sins and so when we encounter people that have committed sexual sins um, including homosexuality then our reaction should be to not seek consequences for them that's what jesus resisted also if you look at the first five verses of john chapter 8 you will see that they were trying to get jesus to publicly declare uh, a label on sin and while it's not a problem to call something sin we should call things sin the bible calls things sin i just did so in this video uh labeling something sin but there's a difference between admitting that something is a sin pointing out that something's a sin uh, there's a difference between that and having to make sure it's said that this is sin and that's something that people as i shared on sunday will do with like homosexuality for example we have to make sure that, that once a year someone preaches against it and we may have to make sure that uh, it's on our website where we stand on that and we have to make sure that it's in our documents and on our bulletins and when someone walks into our service on sunday morning we have to announce good morning welcome to bethel where we are against homosexuality and we have to make sure that everybody knows where we stand and that's the litmus test if you get interested in a teacher you have to find out where does he stand on homosexuality so i know where i stand with him uh and this does demand to label something it's kind of a weird thing because we're supposed to call things sin call things out but at the same time not be so like aggressive to make sure we we point uh, a sin out all the time uh, we don't do that with gossip you know we don't have to make sure we preach a gossip message every year and and make sure we tell everybody where we stand on gossip uh, why other sins so that that's the dilemma here and in verse 3 you see that that she was caught in the act of adultery which means that the man had to have been there so they caught the man also but they only brought the woman and the reason why is they were selective in their sin labeling they wanted to label the woman's sin sin but they didn't care to label the man's sin sin and we do that as well just like i mentioned homosexuality uh, versus versus gossip you can even take pornography versus uh, an anger problem so if a, a woman gets mad at a man because of pornography she should at least consider am i mad at myself for my own sins so uh, <laughs> we need to be careful not to be mad at one sin but not upset with the other it's all sin uh, also we want to make sure that in our pursuit of a good cause now the pharisees were uh, ignorant at least some of them that they didn't realize that their cause was flawed but nonetheless they thought their cause was a godly cause because jesus to them was a false christ it would be like there being a false teacher today or a false prophet uh, we would feel inclined to want to uh, oppose them if they were false teachers and so here the pharisees are trying to oppose jesus and they're trying to find some trap to uh, bring him down in the process they were willing to take this poor woman drag her out publicly in front of everybody even potentially have her stoned to death uh, and just kind of destroy her why so that they could accomplish this cause that they felt was a good cause and we could do the same thing in our culture wars uh, we could bash homosexuality and trash it and attack it uh, without regard to people that are getting hurt in the way that we're carrying out that conflict do, do we need to preach against sin do we need to uh, confront sin teach people to live righteously absolutely 
but not uh, do it in a way that we're destroying people's lives. So there needs to be a caution there and Jesus pushed against that. We also want to make sure that it, before we confront, deal with anybody else's sin, we want to make sure that we know that in this passage, Jesus said, he who is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone. Of course, everybody left because nobody is without sin. And he's showing us uh, where grace comes from for us as human beings. If we keep in mind our sin, then we will, it'll be hard for us not to be gracious to other people and their sins. So as we go into sexuality and deal with different things, keep in mind before you get judgmental towards others, remember the sin issues that you have in your life. And then verses 10 and 11, we see that he says, where are those who condemn you? And they said, they all, she said, they all left. And Jesus said, well, then neither do I condemn you. And then he said, go and sin no more. Now, that's where he shows us that uh, the way to react to this is when you see someone sinning or become aware that someone sinned and it sickens you, you're you, you're upset about it and you have certain feelings of condemnation towards them. That is a typical initial reaction. And what I want to do is remind myself of my own sinful tendencies, remind myself of consistencies and different things and, and make sure to develop a gracious response to the person. But then in the gracious response, I want to make sure that I offer hope for deliverance that I don't just say, I'm gonna be nice and gracious to you and it's okay if you're stuck in that uh, destructive behavior, just I'll leave you in there. No, we wanna encourage them to come out of that, but we wanna do it in such a gracious, non-condemning way like Jesus did. Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. So we wanna make sure again, when we deal with this subject of, of sexuality, particularly when it comes to sin and people's struggles with it, we want to make sure that we're cautious to be gracious towards others and understanding towards others so that we can work towards victory. So over the next few weeks, we're going to continue to discuss sexuality. If you have any questions about what I said in this video, uh, please leave those in comments. I'll be glad to respond to those or any comments that you may have or additional insights that I didn't share. Again, the whole video is on our channel and the service from March 21st. Uh, if you are on Facebook, just uh, follow our, our page. And if you are on YouTube, click subscribe uh, and click the notification button and you'll be notified anytime new videos are up, uploaded. Uh, so let's continue to, to walk in sexual purity and satisfaction as God ordained. God bless you.